virtual house flipping, right? That's a buzzword people are tossing around these days. Virtual house flipping, house flipping out of state, remote house flipping, passive house flipping, right? You hear all these buzzwords, right? Well, today I'm going to give you the lowdown on virtual house flipping. I'm going to utilize a real deal, show you exactly how it would work out. And most importantly, I'm going to show you your real world expectations, like how frequently are these deals actually going to get done versus how many times are you just tossing out offers and praying? This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. This is the show where I work with you guys one on one. One and today I'm working with my man JJ, an investor from LA. You would like to do some virtual house flipping, brother. You are trying to flip some houses virtually, and just so happens you come across Holton Wise, Holton Wise TV, and we are here to help you, brother, because we can help you flip the house by helping you make an offer. By helping you do your due diligence, by helping you figure out what numbers you need to put where to make the deal work. And we are the people that will do the rehab for you because somebody's got to do the rehab. If you're doing it virtually, that's great. But there has to physically be somebody at that property with a hammer in their hand. And we happen to have those people because we have a full turnkey investment operation here property management renovation construction landscaping tenant screening tenant leasing repairs even have homeowners insurance for landlords all throughout ohio right we got the whole turnkey one-stop shop but it all starts with the education okay it all starts with the education so what we're going to do now take a quick break and i'm going to get in to the numbers on this property, show you where every dollar needs to go in, where every dollar is going to come out, and show you exactly how to make a reasonable profit. There are two sides to wholesaling. Bodacious marketing to attract motivated sellers and data-driven analytics. Together, they're a match made in heaven. This is our wholesaling course. Let the wicked get by the doors! Welcome back. Let's pull up the property, okay? 2831 Grovewood Avenue, Parma, 44134. They just reduced the price to 117.5. This one's getting a little stagnant. 33 days on the market. $102.44 a square foot. Imagine that. Can you guys out there watching from L.A. imagine getting a property for $102 a square foot? Right? That's what happens when you're in Northeast Ohio, the Cleveland area, right? Parma is a suburb directly south of Cleveland. Very familiar with Parma. Lived in Parma. Graduated high school and college in Parma, okay? I consider this to be a B-grade neighborhood in the Cleveland area. If you don't know what I mean when I say B-grade, I want you to click the show notes below or go to the Tools and the Resources tab on HoldenWise.com and check out the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods. I graded all the neighborhoods. A to F scale, just like in school, right? A, that's going to be low risk, high cost, high owner occupancy. F, high risk, low cost, low owner occupancy, right? B, B, B is pretty close to the top, right? A is really never going to work for long-term rentals. It's really going to be owner occupants and maybe some luxury Airbnbs, okay? B is going to be a mix, Sometimes you can get some rentals, but more or less, the neighborhood pricing is going to be driven by owner occupants. This area is like a first time home buyer area, right? First time home buyers are going to jump into this area, okay? So it doesn't really make sense from a long-term rental perspective unless the market is really down, which it's not in 2021. And this house is pretty nice. This is going to be like a quick cosmetic flip, okay? 
what they did is they did a pretty good job, like, making it pretty, like, decently new looking for a first-time home buyer. They got the gray. They got the fresh carpet. They got the white paint. Like, the, the whole house throughout the house looks good. But what they didn't do is they didn't do the two most important rooms in the home, right? The rest of the home looks good. It's got this gray theme. And then, bam, dude, you enter, like, 1984 uh, with, with this kitchen, right? This just dated, uh, hideous kitchen, really. I mean, it just really kills it right i mean the living room is like with the times and everything else is pretty fresh pretty pretty usable and then boom the kitchen just looks horrendous same thing with the bathroom dude look at this down here like this just looks like crap right uh if you guys are out there flipping houses doing any type of deals what you have to understand is kitchens and baths sell homes okay kitchens and baths are the most important rooms of the home right so if there's any room you're going to put the money it's the kitchen and the bath right as far as mechanicals go it's great that looks to be a fresh, brand-new hot water tank. That looks like a fresh, brand-new furnace, right? So whoever this person is, like, they did everything. <laughs> like, they literally just, like, renovated. It looks like they renovated everything on this house except for the two most important rooms. And there you got a nice AC. That's AC. That's great. You don't see that all the time uh, in the Cleveland market. So it's very good when you have an AC. Okay. So kitchen and bath. They didn't do the kitchen and the bath, okay? They should have. That's the most important room, and that's where our opportunity lies to potentially flip this deal. But I got to be honest with you. Yeah, I got to set the proper expectations, right? You're going to be doing flipping. Flipping houses like this off the MLS, the margins are incredibly thin because there's a lot of people that are going to want to buy these things, right? If you're really going to be successful flipping houses, you got to do one of two things, perhaps both, right? One is if we're going to flip houses off the MLS, you need to know. Your closure rate of actually getting the deal for the price you need to get it, which I'm going to give to you momentarily, right? I'm going to give you all the numbers. I'm going to give you the most you can pay for this to make a reasonable profit. But you have to understand, when you're flipping houses and they're already listed on the MLS with a real estate agent or a real estate broker, the odds of you doing a deal where you can make enough money and flip it are probably going to be pretty low, right? There's going to be other people out there that could pay more because they have thinner margins than you, right? For instance, people like myself, real estate brokers, they don't have to pay commission when they sell, right? And then when they buy, they get a commission, okay? So just by that alone, right, they could probably pay at least 7 to 10% more than you and make the same profit. Additionally, contractors, right? You got people out there that are realtors and contractors. They save on those margins, right? So you got to think of that stuff. So oftentimes... The best flippers are the best marketers, the best people that can market distressed sellers before the house gets put on the market. Oftentimes, I get investors, they reach out to me. They're like, Hey, James, do you ever deal with off-market properties? Yeah, motherfucker. Every single day, I am a real estate broker. How the fuck? fuck do you think properties get on the market i fucking put them there people <laughs> so, so all you people out there that are like ah, you get off market properties yeah some bitch every fucking day i spend over a hundred thousand dollars a year marketing to sellers to then put their property on the market right my other show the investment properties for sale show Every single fucking property on the investment properties for sale show, folks, was an off-market deal that I found the seller. And then I put that some bitch on the market because that's my job, right? So if you're out there and you're thinking of asking your realtor, ah, do you got off-market deals? Don't do it because he's just going to kick you in the dick because he thinks you're an idiot, okay? So don't ask people that question, guys. That's my tip to you. That's a pro, pro tip. Okay, so what I'm getting at is if there's a middleman involved anywhere, it's not truly off market. Okay, if there's a guy like me who's broker in a sale, you ain't got an off market deal, right? You're dealing with bigger, you know, smaller, thinner margins, right? Bigger audience. Okay, so that's what makes these MLS deals tough. So what you would need to really do to really be good at flipping houses, right? You could either utilize me and my resources which is what we're doing today but you have to understand to get a deal we're gonna have to do 10 15 20 30 of these right we're gonna have to do a lot of these we're gonna have to do the due diligence on a ton of properties and send off a ton of offers 
I've literally written offers on thousands and thousands and thousands of houses in my life that have never gone anywhere. That's the nature of the beast. It is a numbers game, right? So you have to understand the probability of closing this at the price you need to smaller, right? And that's always going to be there when you're flipping MLS houses remotely. Second thing you could do is directly reach out to these off-market sellers, right? Not asking a middleman. We already went through that. Directly reaching them. How the fuck do you do that, you may ask yourself. Well, send them a letter. Give them a phone call. Okay, that sounds great, James. How do I figure out who the best sellers are going to be? And, like, how do, I, how, do I, how do I know? Like, what do I do, right? Well, you want to find distressed sellers, people facing foreclosures, people getting divorced, uh, people that own rental properties. And guess what, folks? It just so happens your boy Jay Wise has all that data available to you, right? Right here, you see the sign? It's called PropStream, real estate data. If you watch my show all the time, that's what that is. You're probably like, no, real estate data, what does that mean? It's the list of all that stuff, right? You can make your own mailing lists, right? And it's anywhere in the nation, Cleveland, Seattle, Washington, D.C., wherever you're from. If you truly want to make a lot of money flipping houses, one way to do it, again, it's through the MLS, but you're going to be – you know, dealing with a lot more competition. If you can get them before they get put on the MLS by somebody like me, you're going to do your best bet. And then you could narrow down your targeting, right? You could be like, okay, let's say I live in Reno, Nevada. I'm only going to look for people getting divorced in Reno, Nevada. Boom, punch that information into PropStream. They will populate a list for you. Then you send them letters or you give them all phone calls, right? Like it's 2021, bro. You see the owner's name. Punch that motherfucker in Facebook. I'm pretty sure you could find him. Send him a fucking Facebook message. Whatever you got to do, right? That's how you do it, right? That's how you get them before the competition is there, right? So I just need you to know that, right? Because, again, you need a wide margin. Which brings me back to this property. To actually get this deal to work, because I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I'm just saying you shouldn't assume it's like a slam dunk, right? You know what would be a slam dunk? I could tell you what's pretty much guaranteed to work. If you offered the seller 117500 they would take the deal because that is the price that they are telling us they want. But that's not going to work. If you're going to try to flip this house, the most you could pay is eighty grand, right? You can't pay any more than eighty grand. Why? Because you need to spend approximately $25,000 to fix this thing up, right? The rest of the house look great. The mechanicals look great. This is just a tiny, teeny, weeny little... Uh, cosmetic fix, right? All you got to do, improve the bathroom, improve the kitchen. Should cost you about 25K, 30K, worst case scenario, but should easily be 25K. My my team, we do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kitchen and bath renovations like that every year. 25K, boom, simple, easy. Then you put it back on the market, right? Should be able to sell it for 140K. But don't forget, I don't work for free, right? So you got to pay my commission, right? That's, again, where it goes in. If there's a middleman involved, your margins, right? They're going to be thin, right? So it would cost 9800 to get me to sell it. I charge 7%. Then, of course, you got your closing costs, another 14 right? So if you bought it at 80 did that renovation, paid everybody you need to pay, you'd make $23,800, right? So that would be a banging deal. It'd be super smooth, super simple, super easy. My team could knock out that renovation. The only, like, you know, I don't know, fucking – Rocking the plan, I don't know, whatever the whatever the phrase is, right? The only stick in the mud or some shit like that. The only problem is the seller wants $117,500, right? You got to convince the seller to take $37,500 less than what they currently want. With it being on the market, I don't see there being like a high probability to that because I think there's going to be a lot of people that be willing to pay more than $80,000. But $80,000 is the most that you can pay, right? So if you want to continue to try to flip houses that are on the MLS, like I said, we're going to probably need to do 10, 20, 30, 40 of these to get you one of these deals, to get you one of these $20,000 profits. Or, like I said, you'd probably be better served to spend your time, effort, and money uh, reaching sellers directly in whatever market you prefer, and you could do so 
by signing up through PropStream. And guess what, folks? I got a link to that in the show notes below. You get a free trial so you can test it out. And then after that, since you're a Holton Wise TV viewer, you get $3 a month off their software every single month just because you watch Holton Wise TV. That's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.